two of writing Wikipedia articles. And good morning or good evening, depending where you are in the world. Uh, so we have a few people joining us already. So uh, let's get right in with uh, with any questions that people have. Oh, and uh, and actually, before we do that, um, Sarah has reminded me that it's it's always nice if we can have a, uh, a note taker. Um, if there's if one of you is willing to. Uh, paste in any links or any uh, anything that comes up uh, in the discussion that might be useful for other people who aren't able to join us today into the etherpad, uh, it would be very helpful if you could do that. So is there anyone who's uh, willing to volunteer to help Sarah out with that? We all can, but it's, uh, it's nice if there's one person who assigns himself. Uh, so I see just a moment ago uh, that Effie Proctor, you were not getting any sound. Uh, are you still having trouble? Or are you hearing me now? Okay, good. All right. So, uh, anyone have any uh, any questions or any or can anyone tell us about the uh, any articles that they've been working on or anything that they've done with their team? Maybe you've put something on your user page. And uh, as with last week, since we have a pretty small group, please feel free to just uh, click the talk button and use your microphone if you're uh, if you have one set up. You can also use the chat window, whichever you prefer. Okay, EJ. So, um, have you have you been able to establish any kind of communication with your team? What's uh, what's your status so far? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up the team page in the window in the web browser here. Okay. So just hellos so far. So I'm gonna just go to it so we can. I'll take a look at that. Teams page. Let's see which one is your team under number EJ. Oh, I see. Um, so you're with Team Wikipedians. Yes. Okay. So, um, so you've managed to say hello to each other, but not really gotten any further than that. So, you know, my my. Um, idea here is that as you go through the, the general the homework assignments um, and start working on articles that uh, that you might share what you're working on with your teammates uh, if you have questions you might ask each other and try to work through them uh, in addition to using the general team discussion or the, the general class discussion page um, and I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that maybe my my idea of that may just not have been very realistic at this point. It seems like uh, most people are having a bit of a uh, question about how to best engage with their teammates. Um, I, I, I really I think that a, a great thing for a team to do, if it's reasonable for the people on your team, is to find a time of your own each week to um, to use a, a tool, maybe use like Google Hangouts or uh, or an Etherpad or something, and uh, and all work on. Uh, Wikipedia at the same time so that you can share uh, what it is that you're working on and if you have any questions or if you're learning anything new. Um, but it may be that that's that, that sort of expectation that you would sort of el organize in, among yourselves, I'm, it's possible that I haven't given enough structure for that. I, I don't think the, uh, I don't think that this is really Necessary. Uh, the, the the homework assignments originally were were all designed to uh, to be things that you can complete on your own. So if you're having trouble finding a way to work with your team, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I would just I would just recommend that you keep working on your your homework. But I would hope that uh, that there are some places where you're able to to help each other sort through things and, and work on articles together. Um, what, one of the one of the reasons why I've taken this approach um, is as as the instructor I don't really want to be my, my, my role really should be 
to give you an idea of generally how things work on Wikipedia. But in a lot of cases when you're working on an article, uh, a lot of the questions that you'll come up with are around what is appropriate to the article. Um, and I really don't want to be in a position where I'm the ultimate authority on that because I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm just I'm just some guy, right? Um, when whatever article that you're working on, um, you know, I might uh, know something about it, or I might think I know something about it. But uh, you know, if there's a question about whether a section should be added or whether a source is appropriate to it, um, the the kind of experience that I, I'd, I'd like you guys to be having is to talk with each other or other people on Wikipedia to make those decisions. Um, I, I can point you towards the relevant guidelines and policies that would help you make those decisions, but really uh, the, 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 the best thing is to find other people who are interested in the same subject um, and, uh, and, ascent, and, and have a discussion based on, on what the sources are um, about what should go in an article. So uh, maybe, maybe what we can do in, uh, in today's lab session, maybe one of the things we could do is uh, is, is, is pull up an article and have a bit of a conversation about what we might be able to add to it or, or change about it. Um, I think, uh, oh, I see, let's see, I'm just catching up with what's in the chat here. Um, so, I, you know, I think that maybe we could go back to the, uh, the, the article that I've been using as an example, um, so the the uh, MIT Open Course, or no, actually, I think it's the uh, the one I have in mind is the uh, the Twenty Million Minds Foundation, um, see, which is a an article. So Twenty Million Minds Foundation is a is a foundation that funds uh, some projects in open educational resources, and this is an article that um, that someone in one of our workshops recently started. Uh, and I noticed on the talk page recently that someone had suggested, and uh, and this I believe is uh, is someone in our class, Red Welly, um, suggested on the talk page. And this is in the first section, part way down. It's in sort of a strange place, but it says, "Shouldn't the section entitled Founder and Organization be entitled Founder?" Are you guys seeing that? Yes, thank you for posting that link, Johnny Tecmo. So, uh, and then I responded here. I said, yes, that seems reasonable. Uh, if you're so inspired, I think you could go further and essentially uh, combine that section with the next one and maybe change the title to something like Key People. So let's look at the article. So what I'm talking about are these the first two sections after the table of contents. So the first one is called Founder and Organization. Um, and then the second one is uh, is called Dean Flores, President of Twenty Million Minds Foundation. So these are uh, this the second one, especially is, is kind of a strange uh, section heading for a Wikipedia article. Um, and also both of these people, because you see there are blue links, the, the first link in each section. Um, both of these people have their own biography on Wikipedia. So. Um, it's not really ne as necessary to have complete information about both of these people in the article about the 20 Million Minds Foundation, uh, but we could just link to those and have a have really a summarized version here in the article, and we could combine them into one uh, article. So I'm going to pull up a different page that talks about that way of approaching Wikipedia editing, um, which is WP colon summary. Uh, now these shortcuts that you'll see me typing in the boxes um, you don't you can always uh, when I when I hit enter here you see the uh, the actual title of the page is Wikipedia colon summary style and you see it was redirected from Wikipedia colon summary so the the WP is obviously short for Wikipedia oh yes that's right that's right Yep, uh, I was. Uh, thank you for the reminder. Um, so the way that I pulled up this ta this page was to type in WP colon summary, uh, and that's a shortcut that brings you to Wikipedia summary style. And this is an essay about um, essentially about how to deal with 
uh, when there's sort of a subtopic within an article, when there's something that can be summarized and incorporated into one article, while at the same time there's a more thorough, separate article on Wikipedia. Um, so you might want to copy this address and take a look at this uh, at this essay again after the class, or uh, or paste it into the Etherpad. Um, but here, I th I think this could be something that uh, that that might make a, a a nice little exercise for for one or or several of you to work on um, before class on Tuesday. Um, going just going through this text. So if we were to look at the, I'm going to click the edit button on the founder and organization section, because that's going to open just that much in the edit window. And, you know, just going through here and uh, tightening up the text, so deleting things that are more detailed, that th things that aren't really of direct relevance to the organization, that are just sort of personal details, uh, would be a good thing to do. And when you do that, you might want to confirm before you delete something that it's actually mentioned in his biography. So I'm going to go back on his name. So you might want to open his biography in a separate uh, browser window so that you can kind of compare. If it says, uh, you know, at a certain point in his life, he moved to a different city, well, that might not be something that's relevant to the 20 Million Minds Foundation article, but you want to might want to make sure before you delete it that it's actually mentioned in his biography. And if it's not, you might copy and paste it and have it in here. Um, Is this is this making sense? So there, uh, should I sort of continue on this topic, or are there other questions people have? Who who can tell us what what articles you've worked on, or or uh, point us at your user page, maybe if you've done some work on your user page. Or maybe you've been working on a, a new article in, in your user sandbox or something like that. Is there anyone that's been? Okay, so we will. Uh, so let's let's look at citations and sourcing, uh, and and we can maybe look at it in the context of this article that you're interested in. Um, so, E. J. Have you had um, have you had any specific thoughts about what might what could be done to improve this article? Have you uh, you know, just click on the view history link and see? So it looks like you haven't made any edits to the article yet, uh, but maybe you can maybe you can give us a, an idea of what your thoughts are about the article, and I can take that as a jumping off point to uh, to talk about sources. I'm going to click on the talk page to see if there's any, there's any discussion here. Scrolled to the bottom, and I see the most recent comment was from 2011. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the article, and if so, remember you need to scroll with me uh, if you want to see the same part of the page. So I'm actually, I think, if I click on the table of contents, that may uh, we may be able to scroll together that way. Um, so you're saying the awards section, so I'm going to click on awards and honors. Does that jump other people's screens, or maybe not? So why don't you click on the awards and honors section uh, to keep up. So there's not a source next to the description. So um, let's see, which, oh, becoming Sir. So this is the second bullet point you're talking about, yes? I'm sorry? Yes. Oh, I meant in the table of contents, just to jump, to, just 
scroll. You can either click on it in the table of contents or else scroll down to it, just so we're all looking at the same section. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so we're looking at the second bullet point, and there's no source source next to that. Okay, so, um, EJ, do you know of a source that confirms that? Have you, um, you might be able to do a Google search, or um, some have sources, some don't. Yes, so ideally, all of these should have a source. And... Um, it's I it's not necessary that the source be online. Um, if we, here, I'm going to just click on. Well, I'll just, or even even just hovering over the sources uh, should show you what it's uh, what it's pointing to. So if you hover over citation number nine, it's got a web link to the ICCR website. Uh, if you hover over number ten, it's got a, again a web link. Okay, well that's why I'm I'm suggesting that other people hover their mouse over each of the footnotes. Is that not making sense? Oh, it's not working there. Okay. Okay. Well, it's um So the, uh, let's let's forget the specifics. I mean, the, the the point that I'm the point I'm trying to make here is that many of these citations, wh what you're probably used to seeing, is that most citations are going to be links to a web page, but uh, it's not required that something be listed online, and especially for something like this where someone was winning awards in the 1960s and 70s, uh, it it may be that there is no website. That documents that, but there probably were there probably are news articles from back then. So you might be able to go to the library and find an old newspaper article, or um, something that I like to do is I I, I log into my library's uh, my my library has a database that if if I have a, a web account with my library, um, I can log in and find news articles there that are not listed on the. Uh, they're not they're not on the open internet, but when I log into it, I can I can do searches in their database. So if you do something like that, it's perfectly acceptable to just make a normal citation like you would in a in a standard paper um, and list that instead. So, um, okay, Johnny, that's a, a good question. Actually, you can't cite another Wikipedia article. Um, that b Wikipedia, uh, let's. Let me let me uh, let me jump to the page on sources. So I'm going to type in, and you won't be able to see this, but if you type in wp colon uh, sources in the search box, that'll take you to the page called Reliable Sources. It's actually the the page overall is called Verifiability, which is the the, the general policy, and then Reliable Sources is a um, a subset of that. So. Um, the, 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 the main thing that makes a source reliable is that it should be independent of the subject uh, and that it should be published by a, a reputable authority. So sort of the, the, the highest standard of sources is generally considered to be peer-reviewed academic journal articles. Um, because they're because they're of an academic discipline and because they've had um, two or three scholars at least agreeing that uh, that that there's truth in the article. Um, close behind that might be uh, well-established news organizations, so you know a, a, um, a long-standing newspaper that uh, has a reputation um, that 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 has lasted for a while. Uh, a step below that might be a more recent news source. So, you know, something like the Huffington Post, if you're familiar with that, uh, is an online-only publication. Its its uh, standards for inclusion are not there's there's not like a um, you know a, a, a traditional uh, newsroom structure where you have um, you know managing editors and copy editors and and an editor in chief, uh, but they do have some structure to who gets to post on there and who doesn't. And and you know, 
I would think some some basic fact checking. So, uh, you know, the New York Times would be considered a better source in general than the Huffington Post, uh, but the Huffington Post might still be uh, considered a, a, a usable source in some contexts. So anyway, that the the uh, just to get back to what Johnny was asking. Um, Wikipedia is pretty low on that scale. Wikipedia itself is, uh, is, is defined as a place where anybody can contribute, and there is no guarantee that any point on Wikipedia is, is certain to be correct uh, at any point or has even been reviewed by other people at any point in time. Overall, uh, things tend to be pretty good. Uh, people generally catch each other's mistakes, and uh, and if there are you know hoaxes or vandalism, they tend to get caught f caught pretty quickly. But in terms of the the kind of sourcing that would, um, it's it, it would be sort of circular to to cite a Wikipedia article um, to support the facts in another article. So. To get back to this uh, this list of awards on the Yehu Yehudi Menuhin article, um, and again you'll have to scroll down to get to that section. Um, for this this bullet point that EJ uh, EJ was asking about, the best way to address that would be to click click on the edit section, and then it's and this is assuming that we've found something that would be a good source for this, so uh, maybe a, a newspaper article or a book that mentions this or something like that, you know, maybe there's a, a biography, um, and then we would want to go to that point in the text to so the end of that line after the period and click in there, and then uh, you would want to click on the cite button. So I'm just going to describe this, you won't see this on the screen, but the cite button which is in the, in the toolbar on the right-hand side. It's going to give you a little drop-down menu. And then in that drop-down menu on the left-hand side, you'll see templates. So you would click on templates and choose site book or site news, and that'll pull up a form that will let you, uh, let you put in all the bibliographic information. So EJ, does that help with your general question? I should switch over and, and actually demonstrate that. Okay, we'll do that. Yes, please do. That sounds good. I'm using a second monitor today to... I'm using a, a second monitor uh, to avoid the, the gray bar on the left-hand side of the screen, and I'm, I'm wondering if maybe because my web browser is not on the monitor, it's expecting to find it on, and it's not letting me share it. But yeah, if you could take over, that would probably... So I guess we won't do it that way. <laughs> I think I've got it. Yeah. Oh, I see. And it's, but it's, okay, it's not on the monitor I expected, but there we go.
So I'm going to log out and go into my demo account just so that this looks more similar to what you will all see. Okay, and then let's see what. Yehudi Menuhin. Okay, so I'm going back to that article. I'll go back to the awards and honors section. We really could be anywhere to demonstrate this. Uh, and so I'll click edit for that section. And then I would place the cursor right where I want the footnote to appear. So right at the end, right after KBE here, at the end of this line. And then click cite. And that as you can see, uh, drops down an additional menu. Then on the left-hand side, I'll click on Templates, and I'll just assume we're going to put a, a, a book reference in here. Maybe we found a biography. So when you click on that, it pulls up this form, and you'd put in the last name of the author. So let's say it's, uh, it's Jane Smith wrote the book. And there's actually a very nice trick here you can use where if you if you know the ISBN number to the book, so it would be on the title page of the book. I'm sorry, not title I forget the exact name, but the, the, the page inside the front that lists all the publishing information. Um, you could just actually type in the ISBN number. Um, I don't... I could pull in... A, uh, you know what, give me, a, give me a moment to find a valid one. It's, this is worth demonstrating. This is a nice trick for putting books in. Um, search for a book that I know. And let's There we go. So I'm going to copy this ISBN number. I'm going to go back to my Wikipedia article and I'll paste it here. And then I'll click the search magnifying glass. Oh, and I wonder if this is going to not work because it's such a new book. <laughs> Try a different one here. Um, I think I'm going down a rabbit hole here. I'm not. Okay, I'm going to just describe to you how this would work. So what should happen is when you put in the ISBN number and hit search, and this will really happen. I mean, this book I chose was published about a month ago, so it maybe the database needs to update, but it should automatically fill in all the details: the name, the uh, the year, the location, all of that. And you you know, it might not get something like the URL, so you might want to put in a URL to the book's page on. Google Books or on Amazon or something like that. Uh, and then once you've got all of that, you can click on Insert. So I'm going to put in some made-up information here just to demonstrate it. So now if we click preview here, it's gonna, this is the code that it's going to put in the article. So this is, um, this is some kind of confusing code to look at, but let's, let's take a look for a moment. It's, uh, it's all between two tags. So if you know any HTML, this might look a little familiar. Um, but if not, basically the, the first ref tag indicates that we're starting the footnote code. And then at the end, you have a, a ref tag that begins with a, a slash, so the slash tells you that you're, you're ending that code. Um, and then within the reference tag, so that's the thing that basically pushes all this information down to the bottom of the page into a footnote, and then within that, 
um, you have these two squiggly brackets. So these are the part that indicate that it's a, a template that basically means that it's code to be interpreted by Wikipedia and formatted in a certain way. And then within that, the name of the template is site book. And then you can see how each one of these fields is put into part of uh, the, these, these different parameters tell that template what to do. So this is basically how to make a bit of code that represents a book and then it wants to know, well, what's the last name of the author of the book? What's the first name of the author of the book? What's the title of the book? So it's pulling these things in from the fields that we filled in up above. And then I'm going to click on Show Parsed Preview. And this shows us here what it's going to look like in the footnote. So you can see it's got a little bit of formatting here. It's got um, the, the URL has become a link so that the as I hover over Jane's book, you see it gets underlined here. Um, so that's actually going to be a link, um, and it also turned that italic to match the citation style. So now if we click insert, and we don't have to do that preview stuff, I just did that to show you how it's going to look, but if we click insert, it's going to put all of that code into, uh, into the text. So this is where I had the, no, I'm sorry, this is where I had the cursor before I went through all of that, and you see that it's pulled the code right in there. Now. Since we're just editing the section, I'm going to go down and I'll show you, I'm going to click on Show Preview. This is a case where the preview isn't actually going to show you everything that you did. Because it will show you at the end that we've created a footnote, so you see that little one in between brackets. But because we're only looking at this one section, and because it pushed that footnote down into the references section, we don't actually see that part of it. So the actual Jane Smith stuff uh, doesn't show up here yet. I'm going to, uh, you know, even though th this is a test edit, I'm going to save it this time because I want to show you exactly what it would look like. So I'll just put in my edit summary. So I'll say test edit, please revert. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to click save page. And maybe one of you can revert my edit to sort of to clean up after me after we're done looking at this. So here's the section. You see, again, there's the footnote. It's turned into a number nine because now we're further down in the article and there are, I guess, eight footnotes before it. And if I click on it, it's going to jump me down into this. See how it's got me to this Jane Smith line within the references section. I don't know why this keeps coming up. Sorry about that. Um, so there, this should look familiar. Jane Smith, 1968, Jane's book. And you see here, if I hover over it, that's an external link that's going to example.com. And you even have this ISBN number. And this is a nice, it, uh, this also is a nice tool for readers where if they click on this, it's going to allow them to find the book on Amazon on in various library databases. It's going to, here, I'll click on it so you can see. Um, so it pulls you to this screen, and then I guess it's, it's two clicks away. Oh, no, I think I, I just didn't scroll down. So you'll see this big list of online databases where you can find it in all of these different databases about books. So uh, can someone undo my edit? You'll, you'll be fighting a little bit of vandalism on Wikipedia. I click on the View History tab and see if someone's already done that. Yep, looks like Christine already did it. Undid revision by the Foresight demo. So let's see, I've drifted away from my chat window, so if you guys have been giving me feedback here, I've missed it. So check back in there. Okay, well let's let's do that. Let's um So we're we're looking at the revision history now. So let's say let's say that I had put this in and I really meant it. And Christine thought it was, uh, you know, thought it was vandalism. But I'm, I'm saying no. This is a real book. So I would just click this undo button at the very end of the line, and that's going to pull me into this pre-filled edit screen. So first we get a preview on the left-hand side of what it looks like before my edit, and then it's going to put in this content because I'm undoing her. Uh, her undo, <laughs> um, and then it's going to show me the the actual code. So this is this is sort of a preview of just that part of the text, how it's going to look. And then if I actually want to change it, let's say, um, 
you know, I see, oh, it's, it, of course, the title isn't Jane's book. It's something else. Well, I can't edit that in here. Let's see, where's the title? Oh, maybe, did I? Yeah, so I can't edit that in here, Jane's book. I can select it, but I can't edit it. But if I actually wanted to put in the title, and the title was, you know, my first book or something like that, I would have to go down here and and now this is showing me the, the code for the entire article, so I have to scroll all the way down until I find the awards section. So here we are, awards and honors. And then here's the title. So I could select that and type in um, it's Jane's first book. So now I could it's, and it's going to automatically fill in this undid this revision by Christine Bush. Uh, it's got some code in there, so it actually links to her user page and things like that. And then I would click Save Page, so that would undo the edit. Does that make sense, CJ? Do we want to try this on something? We could we could do it on our our talk page. I'll, uh, why don't we go to our course talk page, and I'll make just a uh, a random edit, and you can revert it. So I'll type in wt colon wiki sue. Please. Okay, so I have now made a bit of uh, vandalism. I've done a little vandalism to our talk page. So, uh, EJ, maybe you can see if you can figure out how to revert that. Let's see, I have completely lost my chat window. With my, my, my dual monitor setup that I thought was going to be such a big help. Seems to be nothing but trouble. Okay. Well, maybe she's busy doing it. Let's, I'm going to scroll back to the top and do history. Not yet. You can still see that mine is the most recent one. You know, I have a... Um, this, this actually reminds me of something, um, Christine, that I've been meaning to point out. Um, I've seen in your uh, edits to a few talk pages, there have been some times where you've gone back in and, um, and deleted, like where, where you've, you've maybe made a comment and then we've discussed it elsewhere, discussed it in class or something, uh, and you've sort of, uh, you've, you've decided that maybe that wasn't a suggestion you wanted to pursue or something like that. and. Uh, deleted the section or changed your comment uh, to to reflect your new understanding and um, this is this makes perfect sense to me because I've been you know involved in those discussions with you uh, and and totally understand why you're doing that but I I just thought it would be worthwhile to to mention it's something that's not really Wikipedians can be rather particular about preserving the flow of discussion uh, on talk pages, so even if so even if the point has sort of become moot by a later discussion, uh, the way that other people would res would expect to see that reflected is that the original comment would be preserved, and at the end of the discussion you would say, you know, never mind, I'm withdrawing my suggestion or something like that, uh, rather than having that actually deleted out of a, a talk page. So, um, you know, I, I definitely haven't seen anything that I think is a problem, or I would have said said so. 
um, but as sort of a general practice, it's it's a good idea to um, to kind of once you once you've made a comment on a on a talk page, basically to leave it there. And if a, if the talk page eventually starts to get crowded, the standard thing to do is to um, is to archive the page, is to to basically move older conversations into an archive file. Does that make sense? And I guess uh, somebody tell me verbally because I still haven't found my chat window. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, great. Okay. So let's click view history again. Yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I actually um, just as as someone who was very active on wikis before I came to Wikipedia. Uh, my instincts are much like yours. Uh, I, I, I tend to think, uh, you know, because something exists in the in the edit history, that it's really not that important to preserve it on the on the page itself, especially if it's, you know, just sort of a, a side note or a tangent. Um, but you know, it's definitely a place where you'll find that there, it, especially in sort of more heated discussions or something, there will be people who are very insistent that once something is, is put on that talk page that it must remain there. So, I mean, it's really, I really just bring it up so that you, you know, aren't surprised if you run into someone who is, who, you know, reacts not just with uh, disagreement, but maybe offense to something like that. <laughs> it's definitely happened to me. <laughs> Fair enough. I I think that would be great if you're uh, if you feel prepared to do that, Christine. Um. So uh, while we were discussing that, I guess uh, E Jade or Lit Jade has has done that revision successfully. So kudos to you. This is exactly what I was looking for, um, and hopefully that helps you see how this this kind of thing works on Wikipedia. Um, and then you can always, uh, w when you when you do a reversion like that, um, as I, I think I pointed out, but maybe just in passing, it's it's always a good idea to explain it. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter in this context, but um, when you click on the button, it will put in an automatic edit summary, but it's a very technical edit summary. It just tells the person that you that you undid that revision. And so the best practice is to click at the end of that line and put this is, you know, like uh, undo vandalism or uh, source is unreliable you know maybe if someone had added a, a, a point but it was just uh, you know, or you might get a little more specific like uh, source cited was a personal blog so you know if someone just cites someone's random opinion off of their personal blog uh, to support a fact in a Wikipedia article that would not conform to the reliable sources guideline so this would explain why you're un undoing that. And so it would help someone else looking through it. They, don't, they see not just that you reverted uh, that edition and that you removed something from the Wikipedia article, which would seem strange on its own, but that you did it with a reason. You did it because the source uh, that supported that fact you didn't think was good enough. And so you can, you can probably start to see with that how there's, there can be a lot of interplay between edit summaries and the article talk page. So sometimes 
uh, you'll get into a dynamic where one person adds something to a Wikipedia article and another person reverts it and they might explain why they're reverting it here and you sort of have the beginnings of a discussion in the in the edit history itself uh, but after if it's a if, if it's kind of a, a, a substantive point that they're disagreeing on uh, pretty soon one of them is going to realize that this isn't an effective way to do it that's basically called an edit war if so if you're just going back and forth between two edits and one person is trying to have the last word and 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 just simply undoing the other person's then that's the point where you really need to go to the talk page and have a discussion you know that's that that's more than you would be able to fit into this one line um, and there's actually a very uh, a, a very cool essay on that dynamic and uh, I remember this one by its initials. So it's WP colon BRD. So bold revert discuss is what that stands for. And so it's the the bold revert discuss cycle. So one of the one of the policies on Wikipedia is be bold. Uh, people are encouraged to be bold in in doing anything that they think improves Wikipedia. But if someone boldly does something and you d disagree with it, what you should do is revert. And that is often the thing that tells you that there's a need to have a discussion. You have one person thinking one thing and the other person demonstrating that they, they disagree with it. And so then you should move to the discussion page. So this can be, a, a lot of times people will ask, um, when should I just make an edit to a Wikipedia article? And when should I first bring it up for discussion? And there's no hard and fast answer to that. Uh, the 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 there are cases where it's where it's pretty clearly one way or the other. If you're just fixing a typo, there's no point in having discussion about that first. You just fix it. Um, but if you're looking to take an article in a completely different direction, if you think it was written, you know, heavily based on a very biased source, and it needs a total rewrite, uh, it's probably a good idea to bring that up on the talk page first and alert people to what you're doing and why you're doing it. But in the sort of gray area in between cases, that's where this process um, can be useful. So you, you can feel free to just be bold and edit the article directly. Uh, if someone reverts you, you shouldn't take it personally. You should just take that as a sign that you need to talk it through. Um, and it's also, it's also best to not get too caught up in what state the article gets left in while you discuss it. Um, you know, if, if it's a really high profile article, that might make a difference in the world. But in, in so many cases, um, you know, if you have a disagreement and the article is in sort of the, the, the wrong state for a couple of days while you're discussing it, it's probably not going to have, that's, that's probably not going to be really a big deal in, in the history of the world. There might be, you know, five or 10 people who see it in that version. But the more important thing to do is to focus on the discussion and you know, just be be sort of forgiving of the the idea that the person who uh, is disagreeing with you, well, they they might have a point too. And so, until you've talked it through, don't be don't be too insistent that you're right and they're wrong. Uh, it's just a good way to kind of avoid unnecessary drama. Uh, I think that's a, a, another good thing to point out here is uh, there's another one of the core policies of Wikipedia is called assume good faith. So that's uh, A G F. And this is really a, a very important principle in kind of how to preserve a collegial, collegial and productive editing environment. Is if you if you as much as possible can uh, can assume that the people that you're inter interacting with want to do something that's good for the world. They want to do. They want to work within Wikipedia policy. They want to uh, build an article that is genuinely useful. It's in almost every case that's true, um, and even if you're not able to see it because you're in such a strong disagreement with them at that moment, uh, if you can try to remember that, it's going to make it a lot easier to interact with them in a way that eventually gets you to text that you can both agree on. So, uh, keeping in mind that I'm I'm still without a chat window here, which I just can't explain. Uh, where are we?
Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go to our uh, course page. I actually realize I, I I do know where I can see it. I can see it on the computer I'm using to record this session. So I'm I'm back with the chat. Um, well, I suppose we can look at the. Open Educational Resources page where there's certainly been some discussion. Okay, so EJ, you're asking, I tried to add the citation that Christine found for the award. Forgot to add a summary. How do you add one after you hit the save button? Okay, so the edit histories actually you can't the edit summaries you can't you can't go back in and add that. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. It's if it it's it's always a good idea to um, to add them, but it's not really a big deal if you forget once in a while. Um, let's let's see. I'm gonna pull up the article again. So let's look at the history so we can see what you did. And there's your edit. So uh, there is the automatic edit summary that comes in because you clicked the edit section link. So that's that's good. There is an edit summary in there that's much better than nothing. So if you had just clicked on edit at the top of the article, it wouldn't even tell other people what section you had edited. So um, even without trying to, you did end up with something of an edit summary. And now let's do compare selected revisions. So we have these the two buttons are selected that uh, that will pull up the just compare the the most recent two edits, and this is going to show us what you added. So it's this bold text here. You can see that you used the site web template, uh, and then we have the the name of the author, and we have the title of the page and the URL. So you filled in all of those forms and they uh, all of those fields in the form, and they came out like this, and then um, below that, I, I uh, this may be a preference that I have set that when I look at the, the diff between two revisions, it automatically shows a preview of the article. Um, so I'm going to click on Awards and Honors, that'll jump me down, and you can see that it's just a footnote here, and then I'll click on the footnote, and it's going to jump me down, and there it is, footnote number nine. Very nicely done. So, uh, so yes, there's there's no way to go back and retroactively add an edit summary. If you, if it was a case where you did something kind of more controversial and you really wanted to explain yourself, you could always just go in and um, you, you could go back and click on the talk tab and put a note on the article's talk page. So then you might click on new section and add a comment at the bottom of the article. I just added this new reference because uh, I thought it was worthwhile to have this important award cited or something like that. Again, no no need to do that in this case, but you can imagine a, a case, I'm sure, where it might be more significant. So uh, another thing that I don't think I, I have pointed out about these diffs, so we've, uh, so diff is the, the, the word for when, it, when we look at the comparison between two screens. So I'm going to go back to this one that Oh, I see. Now I'm actually looking at the the talk page, not the the article. So we're seeing a different one, but that's th I can still make the same point here, which is when you look at this. Well, if you're in a discussion, you might want to be pointing someone else towards that same change. So uh, you can always copy that URL and you can paste it in into a discussion. And I'll show you. Actually, this is something that did come up in on our discussion page, so WT Wiki Sue. I'm going to take us back to our discussion page, and I'm going to jump down to, I believe it's conflict of interest. So um, MJ McGowan asked this very detailed question here about uh, something. Oh, and you're, you're with us today, aren't you, uh, MJ? 
Um, so uh, this was this was a, a fine question to ask, and I was perfectly able to understand what she was asking about. But I pointed out in my answer that um, there are ways that you can make it easier for someone else to follow along. So the, the simplest thing you can do is just to link to the article. So she told me it was the article on the Royal Ontario Museum. I was able to type that in, but it would have been a little easier to get there and see the article if she had just put that between double square brackets. Um, and then instead of typing out or pasting in everything that she added in to the article, um, she could have just pasted in that diff link. So she could have gone to the article, pulled up the, the before and after of what she added, and then copy the URL out of the address bar and paste that into the comment. So that's kind of a more typical way that people will talk about comparing edits. Um, you know, you just reverted what I did. I don't understand why. Well, then you you put a link to what that reversion was, so that the, so that everyone looking at that comment can easily see what it is that you're talking about. Yeah, there's uh, just to reiterate. There's no, there's nothing wrong with the way that Molly did it. Um, this is that that was just fine. Uh, just, just showing another, another possible approach. Yep. Um. So is there, maybe we can just walk through another example. Is there someone who's worked on an article uh, and can, maybe maybe you want to demonstrate to us what you added to it or what you, uh, or even on your own user page? Can someone throw out an example that we could look at? I mean, I think, I think maybe just running through this process a couple of times would would make it uh, sink in a little better. I can I can just come up with one. Uh, let, let me stay on our page here. So OK. I think that's the same same one. Our, that's the Royal Ontario Museum. That's the one we were just looking at. But let's let's look at that. Uh, let's let's look at that more specifically. Yeah, it's your home turf, isn't it? So let's look at the history. And uh, Molly, we see lots of your edits, uh, which is this is, uh, I, I, I see that you've been editing in small increments, which is a great way to go. Um, so if we were to just look at, I'm going to pick sort of a random one here, and I'm going to click on the prev link. So that's going to compare the line that I'm on to the previous one. So that's uh, clicking the preview link is that's the same thing as using these two buttons and doing compare selected re revisions. Those those two do the same thing. And so in this one, it looks like you fixed a typo. So it was reg recognized was misspelled. So uh, one thing you could could have done there is in the edit summary just to fix a typo. Um, it's. Uh, it's always a good idea to give a little bit of information there, but when you're doing really tiny edits here, that can get a little tedious. So it's you know it's sort of a balance. People find their own uh, comfort level of how much detail you want to put in your edit summaries. Um, but if you know, suppose suppose I I don't know maybe I'm from you know the planet Neptune, and on the planet Neptune, this is how we spell the word recognize. So I might want to go to Molly and say, hey, you just you know messed up the spelling instead of fixing it. I would copy this link, this, this URL up here, and then I would click on the, we can even from this diff page, I can click directly on the article talk page. And that's going to take me to, th that'll take me to the talk page, I can click on new section, and that'll give me a form, and I would say, um, let's see, typo, correction, 
funny how I'm making typos in my all my talk about typos. Uh, and I might say M J McAllen, you recently made a spelling change, but I disagree. And I might explain why. But then for the the spelling change, I would I would I would probably go and just I would want to make that the words spelling change to indicate what where the change was. So um, let's see. So I would just I I don't usually use the two bar toolbar. I usually just type in code directly. But uh, if we click on link, that's actually going to give us this nice form that lets us fill that in. So this is going to be a link. So here's this is this is actually a little counterintuitive because it's a diff link because we copied the address out of the URL bar. It's actually we're going to want to treat it as an internal an external web page even though it's part of Wikipedia. We're putting in the full URL, um, and then the target URL. We're going to change. We're going to delete what's in there, and we're going to paste and insert the link. And you can see the code that it put in. So it put the link, the URL here, and there's a space after it, and then it says spelling change, and then we've got a single square bracket around that whole thing. Now at the end of the line, I would want to sign my name, so I would just click on this pencil here, and that puts in the squiggly marks that'll sign my name. And I'm going to click on Show Preview to see what that would look like. So here, here we have the line that I put in. And you can see that Spelling Change is actually providing a link that shows what the action is that I'm concerned about. So when she's reading it, or when someone else is reading it, and wondering what it is that I'm going on about, they'll be able to jump right to it and see that change. Uh, I do want to point out, since since uh, we've had so much discussion on this particular series of edits, uh, when Molly asked me this question, she had already um, gone to the talk page and had a little bit of discussion because this person had reverted her edit. And so she, so Molly, this is really exemplary. Uh, behavior here. This is you. This is you living out the bold revert discuss cycle. So this person reverted your edit. You didn't understand why, and so you went to the talk page, created a new section, and asked the question. And they came back and explained why, and you understood. So uh, this is exactly uh, what what Wikipedians like to see uh, when there's any kind of disagreement on a page. Anyway, it looks like we've we've passed the end of the hour, so we should probably wrap up here. Thank <laughs> you, like Correctino. All right, well, thanks everybody for stopping by, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday or Wednesday, as the case may be. Um, and uh, also, the, uh, the, the week three page has now been posted on Wikipedia. So uh, if you go to our course page, uh, you'll be able to find the link. And that'll, that'll give you a bit of a preview about what we're going to talk about. So down here, this week three link will give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to talk about. And it'll show you the homework that we're going to be doing next week, and that's going to be moving into the final project. So if you're interested in seeing where we're headed, go ahead and take a look. All right, well, I'm glad that was helpful. Looking forward to seeing you all soon. Bye-bye.